Professor Barcadia is a lot like my wife. For the past 10 or so years now, they have done nothing but nag the living hell out of me, which uh, technically turns this channel into fire RPGs. Yep, Skies of Arcadia has been in my ear for years, screaming, play me, play me. And finally, after all this time, I did it. This title was originally released in the year 2000 on the Dreamcast and then a few years later on the GameCube. And surprisingly, despite being on countless gamers' top RPGs ever lists, it has never seen a re-release. After finally getting a chance to play it, I can definitely see what all the hype was about. Skies of Arcadia is a unique, fun JRPG that I couldn't help but love. While this game is difficult to play today, if you do somehow get a chance to give it a go, I would definitely recommend that you do. As you would expect from a game named Skies of Arcadia, the game takes place in the skies of a place called Arcadia. Perhaps the most interesting thing about the game is the unique setting. The entire game is set around six civilizations that are located on several floating continents. You play the role of Vice, a young blue sky pirate. And blue means good as opposed to the black sky pirates who are all jerks. The majority of the game is dedicated to fighting the evil Valuan Empire who are attempting to take over the other continents. Sounds pretty standard, but throw in the appearance of the mysterious Fina who's on an unknown secret quest of her own and this story suddenly is given a load of depth, twists, turns and mystery. You know those moments from your RPG childhood, the ones that just made you smile? That is a feeling I felt with Skies of Arcadia. This narrative is consistently good and is driven by loads of awesome characters. The main characters in your party as well as the many enemies that you face are all memorable and play an important role in the plot. I actually cared about quite a few of them which is something that seems to be happening less and less as the years go on. For a game set in the sky, you would expect a large focus on airships and that is exactly what Skies of Arcadia delivers. You will do a lot of travelling in various airships, but better yet, they play a huge role in the plot as giant airship battles are a huge focus, but more on this later. The world, or should I say the skies, have loads of towns and dungeons to explore with even more landmarks hidden around the place waiting to be discovered. There are also a load of potential crew members that can be recruited to your cause, each providing some sort of benefit such as additional abilities for your ship in battle or the ability to forge weapons. This whole ship theme is one thing that makes Skies of Arcade Arcadia is so unique and something I will always remember it for. There were a lot of awesome things about JRPGs of the past. Random encounters were not one of them. This was the single biggest issue I had with the game. You'll do a lot of flying and a fair amount of dungeon crawling and the rate of the random encounters are consistently frustrating. The turn-based battles themselves are slow, but they do the job. The mechanic that sets this game apart from other JRPGs is the SP system. Each turn the party will build up a shared amount of spirit points and these are required to unleash powerful moves and magic. At every single point of battle you are faced with the choice of do I use a mid powered attack this round or save my SP for a high powered attack next round. Managing these points is where the strategy comes into play, however I don't think this system is as balanced as it should be. What I mean is that healing spells are useless, why would you spend precious SP on healing your party when you can use an easily obtained item for free? I felt that this and the fact that offensive magic is weak really held the system back as I rarely had to factor in magic or healing into my SP management. Have you ever wanted to soar through the skies in a giant airship blowing this shit out of other giant airships? If your answer was yes, no or something in between then you've come to the right place. Skies of Arcadia's other major battle system is the massive airship battles and while these are cool as hell and fit perfectly with the plot, they come with quite a few issues. Pre-battle you can arm your airship with a large variety of guns, cannons and torpedoes. Using these in battle will require SP so once again managing your SP is crucial. And yes, the healing issue from the regular battle system is back again. I just used easily obtained SP free items that fully healed my airship when needed and this eliminated every ounce of difficulty from these battles which was a crying shame. Each round of battle has four phases and you're able to perform a single action in each phase. Once you've input your actions you'll see a lengthy sequence of your airship actions as well as the opposing airship's actions. Watching these sequences are painfully slow and this is something that I found unnecessarily frustrating. Some battles took around 30 minutes purely due to the length of these sequences. While the idea of giant airship battles are awesome, they became a chore in the end. With a bit of tweaking, this system could have been so much better.
It's such a shame that Skies of Arcadia is so difficult to obtain because overall it's a solid JRPG experience that reminds me of the games I loved 20 years ago. The narrative is full of countless awesome feel good moments that made me grin ear to ear and the memorable cast of characters really helped drive this awesome plot. The fact that everything is located on continents in the sky put a nice spin on traditional RPG settings and this allowed for some great moments involving giant airship battles. But as cool as these were, I had a real problem with the slow pace of these ship battles. The SP free item usage is something else that holds both battle systems back and if there's ever a remake I hope this is tweaked. I will note that the random encounter rate was apparently reduced for the GameCube version but I played the Dreamcast version and it was definitely a problem for me. Perhaps many of my issues with this title is a result of playing an 18 year old game in modern times. But even with these issues, Skies of Arcadia is a very good game and I would have no problem recommending it to anyone who still enjoys JRPG from that era. I had loads of fun with it and I'm sure you would too. What's your story with Skies of Arcadia? Long time fan? On your to-do list? Let me know in the comments. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. Make sure you sub for more RPG reviews like this one. See you next time.